Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, I appreciate you stopping by. Now I was able to dig up a little bit of history on an interesting pattern for you today. This one was created by a guy named Cliff Adams. Cliff was born in Kansas in 1917. In 1940, he joined the Army Air Force and flew in the B-24 Liberators in World War II. Did combat missions over Italy. Fortunately, he made it home safely, settled in Oregon, and worked at a machine shop in Eugene for the next 35 years. Now, he was always a fly fisherman and fly tire, never made his living at it, so you don't see a lot of his patterns in a lot of books out there, but I did find two pretty cool ones in the Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia. One of them was called a Waldo streamer, and that's a pretty cool looking streamer. We might tie that one later, but today's pattern is called Cliff's Dunn. Now, it's a pretty simple mayfly dun. It is colorful, though. It's got a red tail and a yellow body and then some brown and ginger hackle. Now, it's not a hard pattern to tie, but I think it looks really cool. I want to tie up a few of them and give it a shot here in Maryland. I hope you all give it a try in your waters. So there it is in the vise. Cliff's done. I think this is a pretty nifty looking pattern. Now, the pattern, the recipe does say size 12. Doesn't give you any other options, so I am going on a size 12. But I would certainly be comfortable tying this big or smaller, maybe a 14 or 16. It's a standard length hook, and I'm going to use some black thread. This is a 70 denier. I'll lay a base down, not all the way back, but we're just going to catch in the, the wing up here in a second. And the wing, just a small tuft of deer hair. This is dyed standard deer hair. Put it in my stacker. One tip here, before you pull it out of your stacker, pull it out so that your tips are going forward. That way you can minimize how many times you have to swap it in your hand. So we've got that right there. I'm gonna grab it from the front. You don't always do that, but in this case I am. And that is about how much I want right there. Envision where my thread is hanging. That's where I'm gonna post it up. And I want it to be probably a little bit longer or maybe not longer, but at least as long as my hackle is going to be. So let's get a couple wraps right here. And don't worry if it spins around a little bit on you. We will manipulate that before we're done, before we wrap our hackle. So I've got three or four fairly tight wraps right there. Is that gonna be high enough? Yep, I think that's gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna lift this up here and then try to cut this off at a little bit of a taper right here. Now, medium wraps, until I get this bound in right here. Now get your thread to the back of that bend. Take some red strung saddle hackle. Doesn't have to be the expensive stuff right here, just a good, I'd say 12 or 15 fibers. And a little bit longer than a hook gap, maybe not the whole length of a, a shank, a body, but a significant tail, I would say. Let's get a couple of wraps of that caught in right there. I think that's gonna be enough of a tail. A few more going forward before we snip the rest of this red off. Now our rib is just gonna be a brown palmer tackle. And don't worry, you don't have to use high quality for this. You don't have to necessarily use a small one because we're gonna trim it after we've wrapped the body up. So I've got a, this is a pretty small feather anyway, but we're still gonna probably have to trim it. So catch that in. Now let's wax our thread and put some yellow dubbing on it. And this is just yellow yarn. It is acrylic yarn that I put right into my coffee grinder. I'm not gonna put it on too thick. You see, we don't have a whole lot of a body there to go. We're just gonna dub it right back behind that where that wing's gonna post up. And I wouldn't worry too much if you think that's just a little too fuzzy or fluffy because we're gonna wrap this rib pretty close together and it will kind of help us form that body right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take four or five wraps up here, pretty close together, get us a lot of hackle here, but we are gonna trim it in just a second anyway. All right, I know that looks like a lot of hackle, but just spend a minute or so cutting it off pretty short all the way around. All 
Okay, I think we're fine there. Now before we post this wing up, let's take some ginger hackle, dry fly hackle and ginger. Now this long feather I have right here has a range of sizes. It probably starts at a size eight or 10, and then all the way down here at the small end, gets down here to a 14 or so. So here's what you can do. You can just fold it over. Now that's at least two times the hook gap right there. So I'm gonna pull it around until I get it about one and a half times the hook gap. And I think right there, that's gonna be my tie-in point. So what I'll do, I'll just strip a little bit of bare stem right there, and that's where I'll catch it in. And I'm gonna catch this in with a couple wraps just right behind this deer hair. Okay, a little bit of bare stem showing. It'll make that first wrap a little bit easier. Now I'm gonna pull this deer hair up and then capture the stem forward on the shank up here. Not all the way up, I still need to trim it. But you see, I got that little nub right there and I still got, I've still got room to get in there and trim that. Now before we wrap this hackle, let's, let's prop this wing up just a little bit. And it might take a few wraps. This is thin thread. It might take me a good bit to prop this up right here. Watch the point of your hook. I just nicked mine. Okay, so that wing is standing upright. Pretty, pretty much what I want. Now let's just wrap this hackle. A couple wraps behind this wing, and then I'd say a good three or four in front of it if you can get them. Okay, that's quite a bit of hackle right there. And I think we're gonna be fine. So let's catch this off and then clean up this head a little bit. And how I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna pull all these back, not real far back, but just far enough where I can put a few wraps right here to get room for my whip finish. And I'm not trying to build a big head, it is a dry fly. I think that's gonna be fine right there. Let's see if we can get a whip finish in there without trapping any of these hackle fibers going forward. Might have to zigzag it in there a little bit. And there we go. See if we have any cleanup. Yeah, I've got a little bit. I've got a couple of fibers going forward and then one little stray piece of black thread right there. But overall, I think we're good to go. Maybe a little bit more cleanup, and I think a drop of head cement, and this guy's ready for the box. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.